Hello everybody and thank you for tuning in. My name is Shauna and on this channel I talk about my homeschooling journey with my six-year-old twins and my eight-year-old twins. This is actually going to be a collaboration today that I am hosting, so I'm super excited about that. And it's on my favorite subject, which is reading and read-alouds and books and all things reading. And so that just makes me super happy, especially kids and reading. And I can't wait to see what the other moms are going to be talking about. So go ahead and check out the playlist. I'll put it in the description of the other moms that are going to be sharing with you how they do read alouds in their house because it's going to look different in everybody else's house. If you are new here, welcome. I'm so happy that you're here. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button and also the little bell that's going to let you know when my new videos come out. Also, I'd really appreciate if you give me a thumbs up. That helps my videos to be seen by other people looking for this type of content. Anyway, so let's get started. Okay, read alouds, right? We all know they're super important. I thought, yeah, I'm going to read to my kid. I know it's important. I know that you go to bed and you read your children a story and you tuck them in and, you know, and then I found myself putting it off a lot like, oh, I'll read to them tomorrow. I'm just so tired and they're just all over the place and I just want them to go to bed. And then I found these books and it changed my world this one is sarah mckenzie read aloud family this one is jim trelease the read aloud handbook now this is um the seventh edition there is now an eighth edition but i think i still prefer the seventh edition if i had if if you're trying to figure out which one to choose because you can only get one i think i would go with jim trelease these books just really opened my eyes to not only you know yes read your children a bedtime story but literally what it does for the child and for that experience and the learning that goes on from reading aloud and how important it is for children to hear you reading aloud to them, not just when they can't read, but even when they can read themselves, how important it is to continue that um, read aloud time. And I know not every family does that. And again, it's your family. Whatever you do is going to be what's best for your family. And if you stay tuned with my channel, I'm going to be doing some day in the life videos so you'll be able to see us actually implementing these read alouds and how we do our homeschool. I'm going to do some lessons with the um, curriculum that we use. So our day starts off with one of my daughters usually reading to me. They are always the ones that will always initiate reading, which is great. And of course, it's welcome. It's usually kind of a 50-50 between whether it's my eight-year-old or my six-year-old. And one of them will either climb into bed with me and start reading, or they'll follow me around the kitchen while I'm making breakfast and start reading. And I'll show you an example of what they are reading. So my six-year-old daughter, she's reading really, really well. She's going through the Sophie Mouse books. If you have a little girl that just loves cute things, this series is so adorable. It's clean. It's nice. It's there, I haven't found anything that I don't approve of. And it's just a little chapter book you can see here. And she does really well. There's only a couple times she has to ask me for words and it's usually for names that she'll ask me for. So what I do is they need to read to me for 10 minutes each day. Each child needs to read for, to me for 10 minutes. There is one exception and I'll tell you that in a minute. And then after 10 minutes they can stop and they go put a sticker on their sticker chart. Their sticker chart has 20 little spaces and I'll put a picture here. And so there's 20 spaces. These ones are filled out already because we are at the end of the month. Even if they read to me for three hours, they only get one sticker per day. And since there's only 20, that gives them like 10 days that they could be lazy or that we just don't get around to reading. But if they do read past those 20 days, they get a special sticker because my kids are very sticker motivated. And my little daughter loves mermaids, so her special stickers are these mermaids. So she just finished her sticker chart yesterday, so if she reads to me 
again, she'll get to put one of these mermaid stickers on there. This will let me know that she gets an extra dime because right now she's earned $5 for doing the reading um, for this month. Um, it's always a different prize. So sometimes it's an experience like just me and her get to go on a walk or I take her or we go out for like frozen yogurt or something like that. This month I was like, okay, I have so much planning for this first month of school that it's just going to be money. <laughs> and then for my older daughter, she loves unicorns. So her special sticker will be unicorns. My little son, dinosaurs so his are dinosaurs and my older son tornadoes they are still in the mail uh, they should be here in a couple days now you'll notice that my younger son's is not filled out very much at all he he's just not into reading right now and i don't want to push him because i don't want it to be something that he is just not excited about so we just kind of do it when he is wanting to. So he's not going to get the $5 prize. And he knows that and I know that. So for every every time that he does read to me, he gets a dime. So he knows that he's still he makes money each time that he reads. So that's motivation to him. And right now he's just not a strong reader at all. He's still working on those CVC words. So for his books, we are using these My First Reading Libra Library from Usborne. And even these are still a little bit like the first book, Pirate Pat, is still even like I'll read this side and then he reads this side. So he can read this, it just takes him a really long time. And then I'll read this side and he will read this side. So by the time we get to the end of one of these books, it's like 10 minutes. So he'll get a sticker and that takes, it takes a lot out of him. And then for a couple days, he's like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm like, all right. And then sometimes he'll bring me a book and say, I want to read. I'm like, yeah, okay. So that's just kind of how we do that with him. And then with my older daughter she is reading she's a really really great reader so she likes these clementine books she's read through all the sophie mouse books she breezed through them like you know in a couple hours she'll read one so she's reading these clementine books and she's also reading these like treasury of illustrated classics this is the one that she's doing now rebecca of stony brook farm and so these are the ones that she's reading aloud to me and it, I, I'll sit down with her for a book like this because there's usually a couple words in here that she needs help with, but not much. And again, just like her little sister, mostly it's names. And then for my older son, he is not as strong of a, of a reader. So he is doing more like Dr. Seuss books and, you know, and he's still a little bit choppy with these, so I give I give him the Dr. Seuss books because he can kind of know in his mind what the word's going to be because it's rhyming, so that kind of helps bring it out, um, bring the word out. So those are the books that they read aloud to me. At lunchtime, I read them Charlotte's Web, which is our August book for Dart for a Brave Writer. So then in the morning, we read Wild Robot, Lunchtime we read Charlotte's Web and then at night we read picture books and sometimes we'll still read Wild Robot because they really like the story but at night when we read the picture books the picture books are usually I have them pick out two each so there's a total of eight and I want them to pick a bird book and then a picture book out of our own personal library. The bird books are from the library and they are going along with our bird unit study. And the other one that they pick out from our library is just so that we are reading the books from, that we own because sometimes we forget about those ones and what's the purpose of owning books if we're not gonna read them. And so I make sure to, that they each get two books, one from the library that aligns with our unit study or whatever that we're going through with our school, 
and then one from our personal library and they think that that's really fun so I read eight of those sometimes wild robot as well we also do poetry tea time on Thursday and or every other Thursday and during that time we all read a poem aloud well a couple poems aloud we actually end up reading I don't know probably about 30 poems um, during our poetry tea time and they love doing that and I think that's about it for like kind of our scheduled read alouds I used to have them sit on the floor and have them do like quiet boxes and stuff. But I was trying to find out a way to streamline our day. So I figure reading while they're eating and then reading at night when we are reading anyway was like so perfect. And then that frees up other pockets of our day to either be outside playing or to let allow them to have their free time. So that is how we do our read aloud. And I would love for you to put in the comments how you do your read aloud and what has been working for your family and what your kids are reading, especially if they are around my kids' age, because I am always looking for new books for my kids because especially my daughters, they just blaze through them. So again, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out the playlist and I will chat with you next time. Bye.